call a public works meeting to order. So with the roll call, um, Alder Person Perella is excused. Yeah. Uh, Alder Person Salazar? Here. Alder Person Savaglio? Present. And Alder Person Wall? Here. Here. So we have four present. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Already, I don't think we need to do introductions tonight. I think we're going to know what everybody here is. Um, we'll start out with uh, approval of minutes from January 25th. Move we'll to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Second. Motion was made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. They are approved. Uh, resolution number 121. 2122, February 7th, 2022, document 27, resolution authorizing or resolution pursuant to Sheboygan Municipal Code 74 63 sub 3 to permit the Winterfest event at Fountain Park on February 26, 2022, to incorporate a fire. Mr. Chairman, uh, Superintendent Mr. Kerwin, no. uh, Joe Kerwin is here this evening. Okay. And uh, he can maybe give a little background and talk about. Uh, specific on this. Yeah. Uh, so the Gateway neighborhood, this is their second time putting on Winterfest in Fountain Park. And um, I know the they work close with the police department and it was a, a pretty good uh, event last year. And they, they're wanting to do it again. This time they're asking okay. um, um, just to have a, a small fire for s'mores, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, um, I said first, you're gonna have to check with uh, Nicholas Noster from um, Fire Department. He, he permits fire fire permits within his area. Um, and then after doing a little more research, um, really it has to go through council for this situ situation. So for something like this, like if, if you wanted to have a, a fire in your backyard, there's regulations and our ordinances and that's all fine and easy. Um, but as far as the parks are concerned, um, you can really only have a fire at the fire pits that we provide and that includes like even the grills that we provide so to bring in your own fire pit and have one really isn't for our ordinance at this time maybe something we want to look at where um, david um, director of public works could approve so we don't have to go through this process at some point but we're looking at several things like that but at this time this um, needs to go to council uh, this committee um, under the uh, working with Nick, the things that we laid out needs to be a metal fire pit, elevated, um, ashes, wood, needs to be clean wood, um, needs to be removed, everything needs to be removed after the event, um, constantly monitored by mature adults, clean dry wood, and uh, nothing closer than 10 feet. So under those conditions, we, we feel it's a good thing for this event and that it should be approved. Yeah. I think as long as the fire department is you know, on board with it, I think pretty good. Uh, Andre, go ahead. So is the fire department going to be there? No, no. Um, so, so will they have extinguishers? Uh, that was not laid out as one of the, the things, but we could make sure we could ask them to have an extinguisher. On yeah, I would feel safer if they had an, an extinguisher. Um, go ahead. Do we require fire extinguishers to be nearby for our public fire pits that already exist in public parks? No. Well, this is a special case, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with just how much snow on the ground. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> so, motion to no. Yeah. Um, I'd make a motion to approve as presented. Okay. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Resolution. Uh, 132 21 22 February 7th, 2022, document 28, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to accept the temporary easement for, for the city to conduct maintenance activities on a drainage swale adjacent to 4812 Ferndale Court. Yes, uh, go ahead, David. Oh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to say, uh, Ryan Sassman, city engineer, will uh, describe this. Uh, 
project on the screen, it directed to the screen, and he'll give you some more detail on it. Yeah, this this address, 4812 Ferndale Court, is located in the Fox Meadows subdivision. This up here is Jackson School. It's kind of give you a little little direction on where the area we're talking about. Jackson School. This whole subdivision right in here was built in the mid to late 90s, and all the piping underground leads to a retention pond here. But as part of this drainage, also for the development here, which is in the city, this apartment complex, and these houses along here, there's a drainage swale that goes through here. And as part of that development, it's, at the time it's called an outlot. So the city kind of takes takes care of the, the drainage swales. That, therefore, we know they'll never be developed and we, we basically have control of them. And what happens is uh, these drainage, like I said, this is all built in the mid, mid to mid to late 90s. And this 4812 Ferndale Court is right here. And these drainage swales over the years, they they get, they increase. And this drainage swale here is starting to infringe on our lawn a little bit. So we like to cut back that drainage swale a little bit. Some of the so some of the overgrowth of the of the branches and trees and brush and that. So just just several feet, we go in here and clean clean some of this stuff out. But in order to do that, you can't get access to this drainage swale like through here because it's just it's just too darn wet. So as long as this property owner gives us this temporary access easement through the property right here, we can go back here and do do some of this trimming. Okay. This is something that the property owner re uh, requested. Okay. But I said this subdivision basically. Well, there won't be any problem with him at all. He he's not gonna. He's, he's good. He's okay with us going in there. So. But he's got, he's got to sign his access. He's okay. first. Yeah. That's the very first thing. If they sign it, then we'll get the work done. I'm hoping that we get, I get it signed fairly recently because right now the grass is froze. You really don't do sure. much damage getting equipment back and forth in here. Uh, if it comes spring and it's then 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 it's then mess. yeah then we wait till fall. You know? yeah. Then we wait till fall. There's the homeowner mm -hmm. that, that, that talked to the city about getting some of this trim back here. So. That's it. It's an access easement, and, and, and the easement goes away. It's just temporary. Once the work is done, it, it, there's no Fun. reason to really record it for forever. So that's it. Motion to approve. Second. Motion was made. Second. Then any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Number eight, resolution number one thirty three twenty one twenty two, February seventh, twenty twenty two, document. 28 a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute it with Schickel's Nursery Incorporated regarding the purchase of street trees. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is part of our urban forestry program, and um, we went out to bid. As you can see, this is the contract regarding those purchase of the trees. Um, I, you know, Joe. And I, I don't know if Tim's not here. Is that that could be Tim, maybe online. I'm here, Dave. Okay, that's, Tim. that's all right, Tim. Okay. I saw I saw there was a B up there, and I didn't know that was you. But yeah, if you want to, if you don't mind, if you wanted to maybe just further expand upon the trees and the species and um, what we're purchasing. Yeah, we went out for bid for 670 trees. A uh, variety of species that they're listed on the on the um, RFP, but it, basically a good variety to replace the ash that that we've been losing so many of. And uh, these are mostly native trees. There's some non-native, but they're all hardy to to grow in the conditions that they need to along the streets. So we went out for bid because it was a big purchase of so many trees, and um, we really got a good price on it. And we got everything that we wanted. And they're coming from a nursery in New York State, the same nursery where we picked, where we bought some trees from last year, just not as many. We have that new community gravel bed, if you want to call it that, in our backyard for growing bare root trees or holding them. We're going to be putting roughly half of these trees in there in the spring, and the other half we'll plant right away in the spring. And then come fall time, we'll be taking them out of that gravel bed and planting them. Excellent. Any other questions at all on, for, for Tim on, on this? Any questions or anything like that? Um, I've got one, Go ahead. Uh, and I'm hoping that it's going to be a great answer. Um, so we've had some neighborhood complaints in the past about trees getting too big for the spaces that they're in. Um, I've learned in the past that we've we've gotten smarter with how trees grow or I, maybe we're genetically engineering trees or just picking better trees. Could you go into like 
are these going to be the right trees in the right spaces this time so we don't ruin sidewalks and talk a little bit about the sidewalk program we approved a few years ago or sure. last year or tim you want to talk about how how now you've uh, systematically and came up with a program for looking at different species and the right species right spacing in in, this, in these terraces yeah thanks it, it, it's really that's our main focus is planting the right tree in the right spot and we've been doing that for the you know since i've been the forester for three years now the what we look for is the mature size of these trees that we're ordering and depending on the size of the terrace meaning the the space between the street and the sidewalk kind of determines how large of a tree we can put there and also there's other factors involved like overhead utilities and um, street lights and sometimes you have a house that's really close you might have a eight foot terrace but the house might be really close to the sidewalk so then even though the sidewalk might not be an issue well the house might be an issue so all these factors are looked at when i'm filling vacancies for for trees and of these trees that we ordered they're they're there's a they're basically one third in like a small category one third in a median and medium category and one third in a in a large category so i can uh kind of put the certain trees in the certain spots depending on the space i have available and and that's that's really the big focus because we we don't want to be replacing more and more sidewalks you know 30 years from now okay thanks Tim. uh any other questions any other comments or anything like that we can move to approve. Second. Motion to be in second. And uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Fair votes aye. That's approved. Okay. We'll go to number nine, resolution 135-21-22, February 7th, 2022, document 30. Resolution authorizing a relocation order in the city of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin, related to the South Side Sewer Interceptor. Uh, oh, go ahead, uh, yep, just give a little, little update. I mean, and then I'll let Ryan explain mm -hmm. this a little bit further. Relocation order, basically, you know, this is regarding our shoreline yep. interceptor project. So, basically, what this is doing is we're we're putting on notice property owners that we're going to either need to acquire a temporary easement, which is kind of just what we did for that drainage swale, for constructing this line, as well as there are some permanent as well so this is part of the starting initiating the process to acquire those easements and i guess with that ryan uh, you might want to explain some of the process in terms of we go out we hide there, there's an appraisal done on the property and so forth and some of the process in terms of how this is accomplished yeah the, the reason we need these easements is we're, we're going to build this a temporary Full foot wide gravel access road to these properties here. Because the big thing is, there's just no access to that sewer right now. I mean, the sewer is pretty much flush with Lake Michigan, pretty darn close. So we need to build this access road, and then you build that road, you need to blend in these in, into the neighboring properties where their where their backyard slope slope down to the sewer area down down to Lake Michigan. And the process is, we hire a um, real estate individual, and they go and appraise the property. They appraise the property, and then they then they determine, okay, you're gonna the city's gonna acquire. 100 square foot temporary easement from you and with their calculations it's worth x amount of dollars that's what that's what a relocation order does even for, for an easement you still pay for you pay for you know we're not we're not purchasing the property which is much more expensive that's what we just need so again in, in this this sets up the process in this that if if there's a disagreement right. in the pricing the city ultimately has the eminent domain process to take a property but that's that's a complicated process, but it goes through. The property owner has a right to get their own appraisal. If they don't like our appraisal, there's an opportunity to negotiate with that, and eventually, that a jurisdictional offer is made. And, and you know, Thomas, or assistant city attorneys here, he can maybe further go into that if there's more detailed questions. So uh, on these 16 houses, mm -hmm. uh, you're saying that the road we need is at the bottom, the houses are at the top. Uh, like what's the functional utility of what we'd be potentially removing from the owner's use a very very little okay yeah fantastic so they, we're, we're there's we're not expecting a, a large large cash outlay on this but it, it's still it's still a legal process that we have to follow the right procedures in order to get these we're, we're anticipating 
ideally we're hoping we're going to get good cooperation we met with some of the neighbors already that understand this and that there is also a, a, a mutual benefit we're, we're protecting the, the infrastructure as well as the embankment that their their property line uh, matches up with uh, you said real estate individual. You, you meant appraiser, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because don't don't trust that, that's, me. That's what I meant. The yeah. appraiser. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's an appraisal person that, that appraises it, yeah. then the, the real estate individual, the one that that does the, the official uh, submittal for 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 uh, for the easement. Okay, gotcha. There, there, there's there's a process for that also. And you've got a company you yes, hired out yes. that does that's all they've been using them for yeah. good for many many years. But this, I know you're talking about the area. We're not talking about any any of the flat area up on top. Yeah. That's actually their yard. It's all on the bottom. It's this isn't property. They'll that, never see it. They can't use from their backyard unless they look over the edge, right? I guess from a real location order, Thomas, if you can talk a little bit more specifically. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. so one thing just to sort of talk about scope. So there, there's two types of easements that we're we're uh, seeking. Uh, one of them is a permanent limited easement related to access. That's about a thousand square feet total. Um, and there's only about six properties where we're getting anything, and one of them is 59 square feet. Um, so it, it, we're, we're not talking a lot. Uh, in terms of the temporary limited easement, we are talking about a lot more in terms of square footage. That's essentially the, the access right for us to be able to go in and then do the construction work. The, the road itself is being built on city property, so that's why these numbers are sort of as, as low as they are. Um, because of the type of acquisition this is, um, we are setting it up for what what's sometimes called a quick take, where if we get to the jurisdictional offer, if we're, if we're not able to get it fully resolved, essentially the city is able to move forward with the construction and then the compensation issue gets sorted out along the way. So we're not, the, the project will not be held up because someone who were asking to get 30 square feet of temporary limited easement won't agree on the dollar amount. Um, but this is sort of a, a transportation and a, a utility type project. Um, so the idea is that we we are able to stay on that schedule. When we when we've done this in the past, someone has said, and no one said it yet. You know, obviously the goal is not to eminent domain and to sort of go through that process. This is something that's you know, we think in the best interest of, of the city, think in the best interest of, of the property owners, um, but this is the process to make sure that rather than go down the, the step of negotiating, have it be unsuccessful, then have to start the formal process. This ensures that we're sort of working our way down the process from the beginning so that we can stay on that schedule that we're, we're hoping to, to be on. It's weird to have an older. To <laughs> <laughs> charge my computer. <laughs> um, can I ask a question of the title? So, so why is it called a relocation order? I'm like, just that is like confusing me. I'm taking it like way simple, but I understand why we want to do this. But like, I'm like, what is? Why is it called that? So, I mean, yeah, by all um, means. So, <laughs> normally, if you're talking eminent domain. You're doing something like we are going to install a road for public access where there has never been a road. And we are going to take the whole property. Okay. So if you want to think of it as you, know, you are being ordered to relocate, you know, you're, you're being compensated for it. This one's a little bit weird because it, it's all easement. We're not acquiring okay. ownership of any land. No one is moving. Okay. Um, no one's moving over their uh, 59 square feet of permanent limited <laughs> easement. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, we're, it's sort of a, a minimal impact, but the statutory process still refers to it as a relocation okay. order. Got it. Thank you. Um, why are some considered permanent and why are some limited? It depends on what is needed with respect to the, the particular property and with respect to the design. So the temporary limited easement is sometimes called a construction easement. You know, we need to get there to do the construction. But once once it's constructed, we're never going to need to touch their property again. The permanent limited easement relates to access to the, the utility. So we need some additional right to be able to go onto their property to get to whether it's a, a manhole or or something of that sort. Okay. 
the bottom line is, you know, this is going to probably be a $10 million project as it's estimated roughly. Yeah. And we just can't be held up because of a couple of easements we need to mm -hmm. yeah. make sure they keep this job going. So, mm -hmm. the, so the city owns the property up right, or abut, abutting the lake. These properties do not go all the way to the lake. They no, correct. Right. Okay. So the bottom of the slope. Okay. So the, 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 and you said the road is going to be temporary, so we're going to take the road out after. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a, it's an access road. I mean, okay. So, so no, it's going to, it's, it's going to stay there. Right. Okay. Okay. That's what I was. Both of them. Okay. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Move to made and second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, on uh, number 10, resolution 136 2122, February 7th, 2022, document 31, resolution authorizing executing a one year lease for the agricultural property in the city of Sheboygan, formerly owned by John Poles Jr. Yes, this <clears throat> property, take your mouse, for at least reference purposes, so you have an understanding of where this is located. I think we talked about this in the council meeting, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The Polk Farm, which the city owns, is right here. This strip of land, a stall road or county trunk KKA and Manning Road at this corner, and then it goes in, in this part of, part of the woods. John Gartman, or Mr. Gartman, David Gartman, excuse me, owns this large parcel that you're very familiar with, I'm assuming, as well. <laughs> he, since he abuts this area, he has been leasing and farming this roughly 30 acres here. So this has kind of been an ongoing good relationship. He's been um, maintaining it and farming it and keeping it in good, good, good status as well as the city gets, you know, some small revenue from him leasing it for farm purposes. So um, <laughs> recommendation is to you know, approve the one-year lease. Uh, he did it last year, and it's been a good relationship. And um, any questions? We've been we've been doing this for yeah. ten or more years at least. I'm sure. <laughs> it, it, it's beneficial to the city to have that land being used. Yes. So I would. Uh, my, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess why don't we approve it for a longer lease term than just one year? Just because if something would change in terms of maybe development and housing or some other potential uh, development that we could do, it's not tied up in a <clears throat> a longer lease that we would have to break or get out of. And this way, year to year, kind of keeps it short and simple. I make a motion to approve. Um, and uh, I love that this uh, project is continuing to keep wetlands from forming in that area. Second. Motion made and seconded. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, next meeting date, March 1st, 2022. Wait, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. There you go. Motion made and seconded. I'm to adjourn. Anyone can answer. Whoever's All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.